previously on Sodor, the modern years. My Aston's got a top-notch sound system too. How about some music while we wait? I just hope his music is something refined. What the blazes is that? I heard it on the radio in the workshop during my rebuild. Something Mr. Hugh called K-pop. Apparently the workmen like it. Well, it would never suit his grace. Good afternoon. Did we meet this morning? Indeed, but not properly. Speaking of that accident, I understand the engine involved was due to take this train. Do you think we could talk like this again? I'm happy to help. We're almost finished with the munitions, and I'm due to ship out on Monday. Oh, what's going to happen after you ship out? I don't know. Wasn't much call for an engine like me. The morning after the wedding train, Duke, Adeline and Duncan were waiting in the sheds. The latter had one of his comedy videos playing. Depends on who you're with. They're just the words we can't say all the time. I must say, I didn't think you'd want to watch George Carlin. He's not exactly prim and proper. Well, you said you liked his work, and I needed a laugh. Whatever for? From what I heard, you did an excellent job with that wedding train yesterday. Not that. I spoke to Harris yesterday, and his words did bring back some memories, but it highlighted how much I'm still missing. You know, there's another way of looking at this. What do you mean? You're part of that happy couple's memories now, and I've little doubt that you have happy memories of them. I mean, wedding trains usually are a joyful event. You're right there. I did enjoy it. I'm sure there'll be plenty more good memories in your future too. So, although you can't look back, perhaps you should look forward. Thank you, Duke. Oh, that's a bit rich coming from you. Excuse me? Who do you think? Did you know he hasn't met the current Earl of Sodor yet? Yes, he mentioned it yesterday. Oh, he mentioned it for weeks after the current one inherited the title. Hey, he grieved at first, but soon became insufferable. What happened? All the previous Earls since I've been built have visited me whilst I've been running. Except the current one, Sir Simon Charles Norrenby. You mean you were upset that the current one broke that tradition? That's not exactly looking forward, is it? Who piped down? An uh, awkward silence fell over the sheds, broken only by the words from the TV. Profane, obscene, blue, off-color, risque, suggestive, cursing, cussing, swearing. All I could think of was... Do you really have to listen to that? Such foul language would never shoot his grace. Well, his grace isn't here, is he? Don't start your boiler aching again. Duke just sighed and moved off to collect his coaches. He'd barely gone before the thin controller strode up to Adeline. Adeline, I've just had a visit from the best man for the wedding list. Both bride and groom asked him to pass on their gratitude. Thank you, sir. I did enjoy it. I heard you cross that old iron bridge too. Well done! I must admit, I was a little scared at first, but some of what I've learned since my rebuild helped me push through it. In that case, would you be able to take regular trains along there? I think so, sir. Then I'll put you into the schedule. Does that mean we won't have a station pilot here then? I didn't mind the extra rest between runs. Hmm, perhaps you engines could take turns. I'll work out a roster for that. You know that line. We usually give our engines a fresh coat of paint as a reward for a good job, but you've just had one. In that case, sir, may I suggest something else? Adeline explained what she had in mind. That would solve a couple of problems. I'll see what I can do. With that, the thin controller headed off. Adeline departed a moment later. She'd continue to look after pilot duties here, for now. She had some trucks to run up to the next station. 
Further up the line, the Duke was just bringing his passenger train into Krosnokurian Station. As he stopped, he spotted a young man waiting for him at the end of the platform. Good morning, Duke. I hope you don't mind, but there's something I'd like to ask you. Is it about that accident yesterday morning? If I recall correctly, you were the chap playing that, uh, music from your fancy car. I was indeed. Music that would never suit his grace, as you put it. I was intrigued by that phrase. I didn't mean any offence. It's just I've always tried to carry myself with dignity and honour, to live up to the name I bear. But how would you know what does suit his grace? A modern peerage would require a modern earl, would it not? Yes, but there's something to be said for traditions. The current one has overlooked quite a few. There's been modern, and then there's just been rude. I see. So you think I've been deliberately rude to you? Well, traditions become so for a reason. Hold on, what did you say? I have been rude, in that I haven't introduced myself. My name is Normby. Simon Normby. Well, I must give you credit, Your Grace. You certainly had me fooled. Excuse me? I wasn't sure if we would meet, but I didn't expect you to go gallivanting around like James Bond. After overhearing you yesterday, I wanted to see exactly what sort of engine would presume to speak on my behalf like that. Now I have. Before Duke could reply, the Earl returned to his car and took off. Did you hear that? Yes, and I found it most helpful. How so? I'm not so worried about my amnesia now. I'd rather forget my past than become trapped in it like that. But, but, what? But I, I mean... That's the Earl of Sodor, the his grace he was so bitter about not meeting. Didn't you hear him deal with that upset delivery driver at your accident? Well, yes, but... He also asked about you yesterday, when I took the wedding train. What did he have to do with it? He was the best man. I think he was hoping to meet you too. I don't think he expected you to reprimand him for not living up to his ancestors. Before Duke could reply, Adeline departed to return to Craven's Gate. Are you alright, old boy? I don't know, driver. Duke replied. Both Sir Simon and Adeline's words had cut rather deeply. As he got his train up to speed, the old engine found himself lost in thought. He couldn't deny that Adeline did have a valid point, as had Duncan in the sheds earlier. But they hadn't lived his life. Some traditions could be laid aside, he supposed. Small things. But as he'd said, Traditions became so for a reason. They reflected the values of those who carried them on, and Sir Simon had shown his lack of them. Penny for your thoughts, Duke? Oh, uh, I was just thinking about what Adelan and Duncan said. Things do need to change with the times. I mean, I'm not your first driver, and this is not the first railway you've run on. It's not just that. Sir Simon, well, he bragged about his car and then blared that brash music. Wasn't he just pointing out that he was in the same situation as that courier? And that music is what people are listening to these days. Yes, but could he have done it without bragging? All that 0 to 60 in 4 seconds malarkey. Jake, are you sure you're not looking for reasons to dislike his grace? I do know how you felt when he didn't visit you last year. Duke went to reply, but found he couldn't. Instead, he fell silent. Later that afternoon, Sir Simon arrived at Lakeside. He parked near a siding, where Atlas was helping some workmen. He climbed out of his car, but had only gone a few paces before the steam engine spoke up. Please stay back, sir. We don't want you to get hurt. Neither do I. How much danger am I in? Not too much. We're just checking to ensure there won't be any landslides. They do happen in this sort of weather. I see. I was planning to speak to Sir Handel, but you're also a former mid sodor engine, aren't you? That's right, sir. Are you researching our old line? In a way. I'm Sir Simon Charles Normby. I met Duke earlier today, and to be honest, it didn't go well. I got the impression I'd wronged him somehow. Oh, that. Yes. All of your predecessors came to visit. (laughs) 
I see what you meant about landslides. So Handel's going to be coming through there? The station master can have him held at Renee's station. He'll have already left Renee's station by now. Can you call his driver on their phone? Not likely. There's barely any coverage up here. There's a level crossing about a mile down or so. You're right. He won't have reached there yet. That was all Sir Simon needed to hear. He jumped into his car and sped off to warn the approaching train. Driving quickly yet carefully, he sped through the village. It wouldn't do to have an accident. Not now. Through the rain came the puffing of an approaching train. Stop! Stop! There's a landslide up ahead! What? Driver! Brakes! It's just before Lakeside Station. Thank you for warning me, Sir Handel said as the guard went to raise the alarm. You're the engine formerly known as Falcon, aren't you? I am, but no passengers have told me that in decades. While you're waiting, would you mind telling me about Duke? Grandpuff? Well, he taught Stuart's Atlas and I most of what we know. But he didn't take any nonsense. He even tried to teach those who didn't deserve it. But Stanley just refused to listen, and Andreas thought he knew better. I see. So he was a mentor to you and the other engines? Yes, that's one way of putting it. Thank you, Sir Handel. You've been most helpful. Really? I'd have thought of it the other way around. You did save me from a nasty accident. Before Sir Simon could reply, the guard returned. Sorry to interrupt, but we've got clearance to return to Renaeus Station. All trains are being held along the line. I'd better let you go on, then. With that, Sir Handel backed off down the line. The next morning, Duke was heading along the line with a passenger train and a lot on his mind. Rusty, Fred and the workmen were still clearing up the landslide, so trains had to run into Lakeside the long way around the loop. Sir Handel had told the other engines of his rescue, but had been surprised to learn exactly who the man with the wet umbrella was. Duke soon reached Scarlowy Station. Waiting for him at the platform was a familiar figure. Good morning, Duke. Oh, um, hello. Sir Simon, I believe I may owe you an apology. That's funny, as I was about to say the same to you. You were? Yes, indeed. Would you like to go first, or shall I? I'm sorry, Your Grace. I did let my feelings get in the way of the facts. You did a good job defusing the situation with that annoyed courier when I had my accident. Even if your approach was a little, um, unconventional... Falcon told me how you saved him last night, too. That sort of thing is the epitome of responsibility. Thank you, Duke, and I'm sorry I didn't come to visit you when I inherited my title last year. That is the tradition you were upset about, isn't it? Indeed, although that may sound silly. I'm sure you have a reason for it. I do, sir. When my old railway was closed, I was left in a shed when the other engines were sold off. But I thought I would be alright, that they'd tell the Earl of Sodor my situation, and that he'd rescue me. That particular Earl was your great-grandfather, Sir Robert Charles Norrenby. I didn't know he'd been killed in the war four years previously, and that his successor was only a boy at the time. As time went on, I couldn't help but wonder why I'd been abandoned. Of course, I learned the whole story in 1969, when an expedition organised by your grandfather found me. If I recall correctly, he led it himself and was the second one into my shed. He helped fund my restoration, along with Sir Charles Topham Hatt. Then when he passed away, my father visited you. Exactly. When you didn't, I couldn't help but feel abandoned again. Then I apologise. The thing is, I wasn't expecting to inherit the title so young. I'm not even 30 yet. It did catch me off guard, as I guess something slipped through the cracks. Just between you and me, Duke, I'm still trying to come to terms with it all. Is there anything I can do to help, sir? Sir Handel described you as a mentor, and you've got a century or so more experience than me. Would you mind if I drew off that from time to time? I think I could learn a lot from you. Of course, but I must admit you did teach me something. 
A modern peerage does require a modern outlook, as does running a modern railway. So you'll be making some changes? I think so. Some traditions can be, well, shunted aside, and I know exactly where to begin. I'm glad to hear it, but all the same, I'm going to make visiting you a formal family tradition to ensure no future dukes or duchesses miss out. Is there anything else I can do to make it up to you? Well, you can call me Grandpa if you like. Thank you, Duke. Thank you, sir. Meanwhile, Adeline and Harris were heading down the line. The Ministry of Defence sappers had finished at the quarry. Adeline had volunteered to take them and Harris down to Croven's Gate. He was shipping out, as far as she knew. It was one last chance to hear more about her past. They talked all the way down the line. Memories flowed back to Adeline, like water into her tank. Are you sure you're going to be alright, Addy? I think so, thanks to you. What you've told me has helped a lot. Glad to hear it. You know, it even has some advantages. That anger that I had towards Duncan. I didn't want that again. So I've tried befriending him. You mean you've had a do-over? Good on you. Thank you. Adeline replied. As they approached Croven's Gate, sadness washed over her. After reuniting with her friend, they were going to get split up again. So, this is it then? All journeys have an end, old girl. I'm just glad we got to talk again. They stopped next to the standard gauge tracks, upon which waited a mixed train. It was to take the sappers back to the mainland, but there was something missing. Isn't there supposed to be a flat car on that train? I don't fancy going back in a box van. Who said you were going back? So you spoke to Sergeant Pewitt, sir? I did indeed, Harris. How would you like to stay here and work for me? Doing what, sir? Station pilot duties here. Adeline's been doing that over the last few days and it's helped immensely. Well, thank you, sir. I'd be happy to work here. You can thank Adeline. It was her idea. As you said, sir, it does solve a couple of problems. Well, I'm not complaining. In that case, Adeline, could you please help Harris into the workshop? We'll need to give him an inspection. Of course. Adeline replied, and she moved off to do so. A little while later, Duke finished his run. After a short discussion with the thin controller, he too went into the workshop. A couple of days later, the engines were getting ready for the day's work. Excuse me, Adeline, but is Grandpa for right? I mean, you've been covering his trains for the last few days. I believe so. He's not still damaged from his accident, is he? Not at all, Stuart. Just getting a fresh coat of paint along with Harris here. Grandpuff? I've been looking back for too long, Stuart. Holding on to the past when I need to let go of some of it. So, I decided to take the livery of this railway I'm actually running on. Rather than that of your old line? Precisely. In hindsight, I think it's a bit overdue. Speaking of new liveries, I must say that suits you too, Harris. Welcome to our railway. Thank you for having me. I'll make sure to do my best. I'm sure you will. You know, Duncan's the only one in a different colour. Hey, and I'll be keeping it. No harm in being a little different. Over the next few days, Adeline and Harris settled into their new routines. Harris soon got the hang of the shunting at Croven's gate, and the other engines found it of massive help. Adeline soon had her own schedule and got used to running along the line. Each time she crossed the old iron bridge, she found it easier. Duke's new outlook suited him too. He found himself more relaxed. He soon built up a good friendship with Sir Simon. happened to your paint? I decided to change it. Now what did you go and do that for? I thought you liked red paint. You're the last engine I'd expect to complain about this colour. It's not about the colour, it's about standing out. Now you're the same as Scarlowy and all the others. 
That's the idea. I learned something valuable recently, young James. This new livery is to remind me of it. Well, if it works, I suppose.